Welcome to the StealthWatch tutorial series. My name is Mike Moyarda, and I'm the Technical Solutions Architect for StealthWatch at Cisco. In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to investigate breach detection with StealthWatch, specifically a remote access breach using stolen credentials. According to the Ponymone Institute 2019 Cost of Breach Study, $3.92 million is the average total cost of a data breach with an average size of the data breach at 25,575 records. That is $150 per record lost. The average time to identify and contain a breach is 279 days. And if the breach life cycle is under 200 days, it costs 1.2 million less than a life cycle over 200 days. To combat this, it is critical to account for 100% of network connections to detect threats that bypass traditional monitoring solutions. In this use case, we will be demonstrating a remote access breach using stolen credentials. You will see firsthand importance of capturing flow data from as close to the endpoint as possible to be able to account for all active and historical network connections. In this use case, an attacker performed reconnaissance against an organization and has identified a remote desktop server that is exposed to the internet. The attacker has discovered the credentials to the server using various techniques and begins building a foothold inside the organization. Using the stolen credentials, we, the attacker, will log into the server. Now that we are inside the data center, tools have been downloaded to make it easier to build a foothold and to begin breaching the organization further. We will be using the Nmap tool to perform the scanning in order to identify these ports. In this demonstration, we will perform a stealth scan against port 22, 23, 3389 in scanning the 198.19.20-0 subnet. From the output, our attack has been successful for further exploitation. Now let's turn to our security tool, StealthWatch, to investigate the alerts generated. StealthWatch will have stored flow records for all north, south, and east-west connections to the remote desktop server and detected the attack traffic that was initialized. In the StealthWatch web UI, we can see the IP address of 198.19.30 that 36 in the file server's host group is one of our top alarming hosts in the organization. Hint, this is the file server that we attacked earlier. If we click on the IP address, a host report will open with various widgets displayed. The first row presents the alarms that have triggered for the host today. Moving from left to right, the host summary displays status host name, host groups, ability to apply net adaptive network control policy within ICE and investigate flows. In the middle is the traffic by peer host group and provides a visual of flows east and west to other internal hosts on the left and north south on the internet on the right. Alarms by type for the last seven days make note of the possible CSC possible remote access breach and address scanning alarms. Scrolling down the page, the top security events section will illustrate any security event this host was engaged in as the source or the target. Notice the address scan events with the targeted port and the target host. These events generated from the reconnaissance scans we performed earlier. As we scroll down, the Users in Session section will display our user information gathered from ICE, such as MAC address, device type, and logged in username. The Application Traffic Internal will display the top application usage trends for this host within the network, and the External will display the top application trends for the host to the Internet. Scroll back up on the host report and click on the alarm of CSE possible remote access breach. Note, 
It's easier to deselect all below the legend of the alarms by type and just select CSC possible remote access breach to make it easier to select the desired alarm. This will pull back a list of the alarms, the source host that is connected, the target of the remote host, the remote desktop server we are connected to, select the action circle, and we can view the flows and run a flow query to investigate further and gain more knowledge on the network behavior. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. To learn more about StealthWatch, go to cisco.com slash go slash StealthWatch. Thank you again.